Hey guys, and welcome to this hobby tips video on how to color glaze brass armor on a death rattle skeleton. Okay, so uh, for those that are that have watched my videos before, sorry, this is going to be a bit of a repeat, but um, yeah, I wanted to uh, demonstrate these techniques on some uh, undead models for those that might come across this video outside of my other videos. So um, yeah, uh, if you're into undead and you know you don't like Stormcast, then you may not see these techniques. So I thought I'd just do a series of them. There should end up being three on the channel. This one being on color glazing uh, the brass armor and then we'll do one on uh, painting uh, bones and then one on the blue green blend on, on the on the robes that I'll be doing so this is the first um, so we're going to go through and uh, basically I'll take you through how to do some nice uh, build up with the, the the rune lord brass and silver some washes and then we're going to come in and do all these little color glazing steps using magenta purple and uh, blue and you'll you should see something really cool it's nice and fast this one we're going to go for a slightly darker style so it won't be quite um yeah we want something a bit older so we're going to do a little bit of scratches and you know that sort of thing just simple 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 techniques nothing too fancy uh, for your basic troops but it should end up something really cool if you want to see uh i guess this in in full the the hobby uh chat video i did uh, where i painted the white king um you'll see that that sort of style it's a little bit darker than the stormcast models that i do on the channel and uh, you end up with yeah really really cool result so i guess uh, uh, grab yourself a model and uh, let's get started. Okay, so for the first step, we want to get that uh, Rune Lord Brass uh, base tone down. So you begin by just adding a little bit of water to your, to your Rune Lord Brass on your palette and uh, start base coating that armor. So you want a, ni a nice, clean, uh, even finish. So you might have to do a second coat here, but you really just want to see yeah, a good, even, even result across the surface. And you might be thinking, well, you know, we're going to do an old sort of undead armor, but you know, you still want a, a nice clean base to begin with because that's always the best way when you're wanting to add, I guess, tarnish or, or any kind of damage. You make it clean first and then you add your, your damage in and that's that's how you build it up. Uh, it makes it much easier than trying to put it in earlier on. So once you've got that down, uh, we go through and we're going to be adding the sepia uh, tone wash and a, and a null and oil uh, black ink wash, uh, one after the other. So adding a little bit of that Lamia medium in and just uh, not, not not to the point of a glaze but just a little bit more transparent and we're just doing an all over wash getting into all the grooves giving a bit of that shadow um, and, and building that up as you're going to see me doing um, and so once you've got that brown down and then the black you're going to have a very sort of oily brassy surface and now we want to add in some light back into this because the washes tend to take out some of the the, the brightness or the, um, the metallic component to these paints so we want to bring back a bit of that shine so then the last step in this first part is that you're going to want to come back in uh, with your uh, in this case Stormhose Silver and do a very very soft directional dry brush and so we want to have a, a nylon brush with a wedge shape on it is, is probably best for this just because there's so many edges and so many small details on these types of models using a really big round brush is going to be too um, yeah too unwieldy you want you want something that's a bit more directional a bit more controllable and so you're just going to be uh, rubbing that paint off the brush until it's very very dry and then uh, you want to just very directionally brush across the surface hitting all of those little edges and 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 uh, where the armor meets another surface or, or or so on you know just to get those little line edge highlights and and overall give the armor a bit more of a buff so that it uh it shines and that's going to really set us up well for when we start our color glazing because with color glazing you want to have a tonal variety before you add the the glaze in otherwise you won't see much of a difference it's very much like adding a filter to a photograph without the value structure there the filter does nothing right so you need those those values that 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 change of from dark to light in order for the color glazes to work but that will, will give us a, a good basically a good base or canvas for this next step with the color glazing so now onto the fun part so we're going to start with the magenta and we're going to move through the purple and then the blue and so um, this is a really fun part of it and it's very relaxing you add your lamia medium in get it very very thin down so that it's quite transparent two or three drops of, of lamia medium in, in, into that shade and then we're just going to and wipe a bit of it off and you'll just see me directing it in this is very directional this isn't a wash so we're, we're, we're placing it where we want to see that the color change in, into seams between the armor 
around rivets. You know, um, you can you can wash, you can like uh, gently shade it across a, a flat surface, but you want to drag the pigment towards the edge or towards the the bottom end so that you see a gradient of shadow moving moving across that armor panel. And so you're going to see me do this with both uh, with all the all three of those colors, but starting with the magenta. The magenta is going to add a lot of red and a lot of uh, more pigmentation in, into that rune of brass. You're going to think that the brass was quite colorful before, but the moment you start adding this magenta and the purple in, suddenly it starts to really become quite vibrant and quite deep in color uh, because you're adding a lot more pigment to it. And it, it just starts to really, really make, make it uh, a lot more interesting to look at. So we're, you're just building that in. Same with the purple. The purple's there to increase vibrancy as well and, and also add a variation of, 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 uh, of shadow. So you're seeing something else as well in some of those areas. You don't have to do everywhere. You're just placing it where, where it looks cool. So where, where, the, where the shadows um, really work for that purple. So you'll see a little bit of, you know, um, the, the brass tone in, into, into magenta, into purple. And then finally, you'll be using that blue. And the blue is there for deep shadows. It's there to, um, yeah, basically refine the, the shadow lines around each of the armor panels. Anywhere where you want to get that little bit deeper, a little bit darker tone, then you add that in. Be very careful with the blue. Make sure it's, it's uh, you've got quite a lot of Lamiamini in, in there, so it's not too, not too um, uh, heavy on the pigment because it will, it will darken everything down. So be very careful with the amount that you add with the blue. And then finally, once all that's dry, you're going to come back in with a line edge a highlight of the silver and this time you're using a, a fine detail brush and just very carefully picking out those those edges the main edges on the armor to for where you want the light to hit and we're now crisping up those those line edge highlights on the main the main panels the main areas so that you get a difference between a, a softer line edge highlight from the dry brush and then a more hard sharp line for, with, with your with your fine detail brush and that's going to give us variation across the surface as well you can also add scratches and little details like that uh, to to make the the armor more tarnished but overall the the goal is a slightly darker brass with these deep colors and these scratches and so you end up with a really cool result. And there we are, one color glaze brass armor on a death rattle skeleton, all done. So, you know, you can see how easy this is. It's super fun and fast, and you can vary up the amount of colors that you get on the surface, depending on what you want. I've gone for a more sort of older, I guess, uh, kind of look, but you could make it brighter or, or any of the colors that you like. That's part of the fun of it. You know, you're just adding those different colors in, giving you the different, like, you know, variations across the surface. Um, but either way, it, it ends up coming up really cool and very fast. So this is like a good technique that you could easily do on, 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 on batch painting, that sort of thing across an army, uh, very fast. Um, these models obviously are a little bit more complex uh, these days, so you've got to pick out a lot of the details, but for the armor sections, it's quite quick. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'll leave an overview at the end for you so you can see a closer up look of the of this model. Uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, click the like button, subscribe button, it really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.